Thank you so much for being a certified body code or emotion code practitioner. And thank you especially for being here for this quick video. As you'll see in a minute, I have something really important to discuss with you that can help protect you as a practitioner and also the entire Discover Healing family. You may not be aware that the FTC, Federal Trade Commission in the United States, recently put together a task force to look at websites that offer health and well-being products or services. And what they're looking for are claims of curing ability that they think are exaggerated or unproven. So to protect yourself against any potential issues with the FTC, we want our practitioners to know about this task force and how we as a company have been advised to handle the things we say. And even if you're outside the US, I hope you'll look into what the legal guidelines are for you so you can make sure you're in compliance with those. So at Discover Healing, we had an attorney look through our website and we've been working to make sure we are using safer language that doesn't look like we're making false claims. Because potentially, if someone were to file a complaint with the FTC about unsubstantiated claims, it could start an investigation of your business as a practitioner or of Discover Healing as a company. So we're trying to err on the side of caution in all our marketing and our content, including the resources we provide to practitioners. And we want to let you know how we've been advised by our attorney because using those same principles in your business can help you to protect yourself from potential problems. We will be emailing you this document that outlines specific language that could cause problems and some other language you could use in its place. It will be sent to all of you in an email. But right now I just want to introduce you to the general principles behind this and there are really only two. And if you can internalize those ideas, it'll help you to know as you go along the things you maybe shouldn't be saying and the kinds of things you can say instead to protect yourself. Each page of this document is broken down into no or things you should avoid saying and yes to indicate what you might want to say instead. So the first idea is that what we do is about potential, not promises. Let me explain by saying that even if you don't say the word guarantee or promise, according to the FTC, you can still sound like you're making a guarantee. So for example, instead of saying the words guarantee or promise, or even language like the emotion code will help you to be happier, we just need to soften it a little and say, for example, the emotion code could help you be happier. See the difference? So instead of sounding like any guarantee of any particular result, we just soften a little so that it talks about potential rather than a promise. There are a lot of other examples in this document that should help you see what we mean. The second idea is that we are helping people, not curing conditions. This is a big one because this is where the FTC could think that we're practicing medicine like an MD or a licensed therapist. Now, if you happen to have those licenses, you already know what you can say, but most of us don't have those licenses, so there are things we shouldn't say. For example, we can't say we are curing or healing people because we don't have that license. Instead, and you've heard me say this a hundred times, we're just finding and removing imbalances. We're getting rid of negative energies that can have different negative effects on the mind and body. So you can actually say energy healing, because it's specific to energy work and not medical work. But we need to avoid saying healing without being specific that we're talking about energy healing. Another big thing to avoid is naming specific conditions like anxiety or depression, PTSD, arthritis, IBS, etc. Because specifically naming conditions or even talking about resolving someone's pain, for example, could be interpreted as practicing medicine without the appropriate license. But we can say things like feeling anxious or sad or having bowel trouble or discomfort or distress or heartache. So think of it as describing how people actually feel rather than naming a condition that would require a license to treat. So those are just a few examples and the document we'll be sending you in the next couple of days has a lot more specifics about things to avoid and things you can say. And without taking too much of your time, I just want you to know that these guidelines could be really important for your protection. So when you receive the document, I recommend looking at it carefully and referring to it often, and eventually it'll probably become second nature to you. 
Of course, you can run your business however you like, but we hope you'll use these guidelines to help you stay safe. We're not giving legal advice because we're not attorneys, and it might be wise to seek some legal advice if you feel the need. But we wanted to tell you how we've been advised so you can use that information to take any action you see fit to protect yourself because we want the best for you. So keep an eye out for an email from us and we'll also be updating the practitioner resource page on our website with this document and also some new and improved tools. So watch for that too. Thank you again for being here. We love you and we're here for you. Let us know if we can do anything to help. <music>